Hi, thank you for joining us this afternoon, Colleen. We're excited to have you here. We have our program advisors who are here to discuss their programs and give you more information. Um, I'm the moderator, so I'll just kind of hang out and I'll help out um, our program advisors. And like I said, they're gonna go through their programs, kind of explain um, what's great about them. Um, other than that, is did you have a bowl to, to share so I could take your photo for that quickly? Oh, oh nice. Oh, wow, you got a whole bag. <laughs> Let me just quickly snap the photo because I'm terrible at using the screenshot button on this. So that's fun. I love popcorn. Popcorn is one of my favorite snacks. Okay, so whoever wants to go first. Okay, um, I'll and then, start. Yeah, and then Annalisa, whenever you want me to share, I'll share your stuff. So hello, good afternoon. My name is Carlos. Welcome to Popcorn with a program. I'm the advisor for the automotive tech program. And I'm going to briefly talk about um, the program. And if you have questions, please stop and ask because I don't like to hear my voice that much. So just let me know if you have a question, all right? All right. Um, so the program has a certificate and a degree. The certificate is seven classes, about 21 credits. And then the degree is um, 60 credits or about 20, 21 classes. The certificate in automotive doesn't require any prerequisites. The only thing you need to do is apply to Pima, be admitted, and take your classes. Um, for the certificate, there isn't any reading, writing, or math required, so you don't even have to take your assessments for the certificate program. But what's important is that when you do apply to Pima, if you haven't already, is that um, in the application, regardless of what you want to study, is that you make sure that um, you, you indicate the program. Because if you put undeclared or undecided um, and you're hoping to get financial aid, the federal government won't fund any students who are undecided or undeclared. So just keep that in mind. If you pick automotive and you pick the certificate, then, um, you don't have to take your assessment test, all right? So just keep that in mind. So, so far the automotive, there's a degree, there's a certificate um, and those, and for the degree you do have reading, writing and math, you have gen eds that are required. So for the degree, you have to take your assessments. Um, so the training is done on, it's a lab-based training, it's in person with homework and written exams being done through D2L. All the tools, vehicles, and equipment for automotive tech are provided by the college. Um, the classes are structured in a way that um, they're all self-paced, which means that a student, um, you work as an individual at your own pace to complete the required hands-on training and testing. Testing meanings, means like the class test. Um, each student is scheduled for a four block hour, four hour block of lab time. Okay, so for example, if you're taking one class, that means that you're taking four hours, one day a week to finish that class. If you signed up for two classes, then you're taking eight hours a week to complete those two classes. So what you do is you, um, you add four hours to each class that you sign up for. And the blocks are Monday, um, are Monday through Thursday uh, mornings from 7.30 to 11.30. And in the afternoon is 12.30 to 4.30. And the evening is 5.30 to 9.30. And then there's a, the Friday ones are morning and afternoon. And currently there isn't a Saturday block. Um, there is one book for all the automotive classes. So you don't have to buy a book for each class. So one book will take care of all the automotive classes. Now, if you register for the degree, well, then that's a little bit different because you have to get a book for your English class, your math class, 
and you know your other uh, general education classes. Um, once you are in the program, um, you're eligible to to go through um, what is it called Mopar and Subaru factory training, and then you're also eligible to do the Snap-on um, factory tool training and certification, and that's available to any automotive students, but you first have to be registered and enrolled in classes. And then those are given apart from the classes. So do you have any questions? Thank you. <laughs> um, about the blocks, can you explain uh, that please again? Yeah, that, I always have a hard time with that. <laughs> so look, at, Let's say that you're an automotive 100 for, and then you pick up the Tuesday, the Tuesday morning. So then that means that for that class, you're going to class to the lab from 730 to 1130 and that's one block, right? So okay. for that one class, it would just be once a week on Tuesday, 730 in the morning to 1130. But you get to pick the time and day, which block. All right, was that clear? Does that make sense? Yeah, and you only get one block. Yeah. Right, okay. Or oh, block yeah. per class. So if you're taking two classes, then you have two blocks. You have to do like your Tuesday morning class and then Friday morning. So it's all up to you. Okay, you awesome. Carlos, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Hi, I'm up. I my name is Annalisa, and I'm the advisor for the Auto Automated Industrial Technology Program, also known as AIT. Um, I'm excited about our program because it has a lot to offer our students. Um, first, I want to just cover what we'll be covering in this presentation. Uh, we have a brochure. We have information about our program, the certificates, and the uh, associate's degree that we offer. In addition, I will uh, present a video from our iBEST team. And all right, so my role as a program advisor is to assist the students in registration, helping them apply for graduation, uh, providing resources for internships and jobs. To get into enrolled into our program, a student does not need assessments if they are pursuing a level one or a level two certificate. So what that means is our level one and our level two certificate is only about six classes and a total of 16 credits. Um, our program provides a lot of flexibility to the student and their schedule, whether they're a parent, whether they're a full-time worker, whether they're retired, any situation. We offer morning, evening, weekend classes, uh, you can do the program part-time, you can do the program full-time. Uh, it's very flexible. And this is for the student who likes to have hands-on. Um, so your classes are in the labs with the instructors who work in the industry. So you get that up-to-date um, modern technology trends of what's going on, who's hiring, uh, what kind of work uh, environment that is. Because of, um, in addition to our program, our students, work in the field. So they uh, offer their peers an insight to the industry, both in the education wise and the work environment wise. Uh, we also offer an associates, which our certifications tie into. So if you wanted to get an associates and transfer to a four year institution, we can do that as well. Uh, the best way to connect with me uh, would be by email at amnunez at pima.edu or by phone 520-206-7259, or also connect you to, through your MyPima. And together we'll create a plan based on your schedule and your needs and your availability. Uh, in addition uh, to working as a program advisor, we have a lot of transferable skills. So if you have questions about your financial aid or additional financial resources, so maybe like childcare, uh, we can help you with that as well. After we schedule um, a time to meet, we can also schedule a tour of the lab. So you have that firsthand experience of what it'd be like to take a class in that learning environment. And you would also meet staff and they can explain the logistics of the program and the, um, the machines. 
So uh, lastly, I also want to add that we work very closely with industry providers because our program is very high demand. Um, a lot of our students are excited about the job outlook because they get hired on before even completing a certificate. So in, that, that is amazing to hear. Like there's a job waiting for me before I even finish my certificate. Amazing, sign me up. <laughs> and they're very good paying jobs. I can tell you our most recent student with a level one was at $28 an hour, which is unheard of. Um, and so we're very excited about our program. Some frequently asked questions are, what are the difference between a level one cert and a level two? So level one are the foundational courses that introduce students to safety, mechanical and electrical measurements and basic measurement and troubleshooting. With level one, we want to teach the students what they need to know, where they go to fix a problem if there is a problem. And level two, our students are more advanced and they will be interacting with many different industrial devices such as sensors, activators, and PLC known as robots and log logical controls. <laughs> Lastly, our uh, most frequently asked question is, do the classes have to be taken in a specific order? And they do not. Our program is very flexible. So if, you, if your class starts with AIT 100 and then AIT 110 and you skip 105, we would just simply add that on to the next semester. So um, are there any questions for my part so far? Because I will also be tying into IBEST AIT program, which offers additional uh, resources. No questions? Uh, no, I'm a part of the IBEST. Um, oh, cool. Program. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. Okay. Yeah. We're going to now take a look at the video and just in case there's a resource that you may have not heard of. Cool. Hello, I'm Stacy Fox, Program Advisor for the IBEST programs at Pima Community College. And we're here today to talk about what is IBEST and is it right for you? I like to think of IBEST as a fantastic bonus. When you join an IBEST cohort, you get all of the same great education you would otherwise. You get the same classes, the same college certificate, but you also get a bunch of extra supports, extra help, like a bonus. A big part of the Magic by Best is the team of people that come together for your success. You'll have your iBest instructors that will be with you from start to finish. With an extra hour of class a day, you'll work on reading, writing, and math skills, yes, but also digital skills, and soft skills like time management, communication, and anything else that's needed. IBEST instructors meet their students where they're at. This means you'll get the help where you need it most. IBEST staff, such as myself, will also have your back. We'll help you navigate the college systems. We'll help you find funding to help you pay for school and find other resources that will help you stay stable, positive, and focused on your goals. As great as the IBEST instructors and staff are, many IBEST graduates say that the best part of their teams are their peers. You see, each IBEST program is run in a cohort model. This means that you'll be working with the same classmates from start to finish. You'll have a chance to practice teamwork and build relationships, and you can help each other succeed along the way. People join IBEST for many reasons. Some do it because they can work on their GED while earning college credit. Others haven't been to school in a while or have struggled with academic settings in the past and just want some extra support. And some feel that being part of a team is essential to their success. Whatever the reason, the results speak for themselves. 85% of learners who start IBES programs complete them successfully. In this hectic world of competing priorities and limited resources, that truly is a remarkable feat. You too can join our team, see how far you can fly. That was a good video. Great. Is there any questions, Colleen? You have no, answers? you guys are all so great. All of you are so nice. That was a great video. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, Colleen. My name is Rosa oh. Bracamonte. I am Hello. the professor for the building and construction technology programs. I'm going to share a screen with you so that you can see what is offered through 
through these programs. <clears throat> So in the building and construction programs, we have six options. One, starting with the building and construction associate of applied science degree, which has um, the different focus areas, a carpenter, cabinet maker, electrician, HVAC and refrigeration technicians, plumber and management. We also have certificates that are available. Certificates are um, cabinet makers, carpenters, electricians, HVAC refrigeration and plumbing. Each certificate requires about between 30, 33 to 35 credits and can be completed in three semesters. Uh, these are stackable credentials, which means any of the credits that you take in the certificate can also be applied into the associate's degree so you can continue and build your, your credentials. Also, when you're working with courses in building and construction, these certificates allow you um, working credentials, such as an NCCER, which is included, it, which is required for trade professionals to apply for different positions in, in um, different states. So for example, if you get your associate, your associate's degree or certificate at Pima College, but you move to Chicago or Missouri, you're, you'll be able to say, I have this NCCER credential instead of just saying, oh, I have a certificate from Pima because they won't know what, you know, what Pima is. But once they you say, I have an NCCER credential, then they'll know that you're properly trained and certified to work in their environment. Um, these these uh, courses in building construction technology are also self-paced, much like the automotive technology program that Carlo, Carlos explained. These are also, you can come in and work in your own pace. Uh, also working in, mo in modules the same way so that you can build your own schedule throughout the week. And um, some of the courses are offered virtually if you don't, you're not able to attend and with just having to attend for the labs to complete that po portion of the courses. So they're very flexible schedules. And then um, you have industry uh, leading training and apprenticeships also included into the program. Uh, some of the key points that I want to point out are the admissions process. Students that are interested in going into some of these building and construction technology programs will complete the admission application and select one of those programs. As Carlos indicated, if you're wanting to use financial aid or any external funding, you want to declare a major so that they know what classes you're going to be taking and be able to get your courses funded. Assessments are also required for these programs because we have some general education requirements such as reading, writing, math to complete your, um, the certificate or the associate's degree. Um, your first semester, you want to register for four key courses, BCT 105, BCT 107, which um, encompasses basic training and tools, blueprint reading, some basic math skills to be able to complete your courses, and then also um, some um, safety features that are embedded into those courses. You also wanna take a STU, a STU 100 course, which is a course that teaches you how to be uh, an efficient college student, and it covers some of the um, employment or um, ways to be able to apply for positions for jobs once you finish at Pima. Also, you wanna take, if you're able, you can take a GTM 105 course that's required for the certificates and the associate's degree. And that's why you'll wanna take assessments uh, when you apply, so you'll know where you're gonna be started. Also, um, you wanna meet with your program advisors such as us, so you learn more about the program requirements that first semester, and you'll be able to, with your program advisor, create a plan that will lay out all the courses you're going to need each semester. Pima College also has a significant amount of resources that are available to students. So if you meet with your program advisor, you'll be able to get a lot of information about those resources that are available. 
And then, the, you know, the best thing at the end, you'll want to um, apply for graduation so you can get a certification, um, maybe information on how to move forward to an, a higher degree or even transfer to a university. So I'm going to talk a little bit about job prospects and uh, wages for these different trades. Um, I researched some information on the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics, and you can take a, a picture of that RQ code there, and it will take you to that website. So you can do a lot of research in different positions, different jobs and trades, and learn what states pay the best. Um, uh, and a little um, funny tip about this: I did some research to see um, construction workers where they make more money. And out of, you would think California would make more money, but it's Hawaii. If you go work in Hawaii in a construction industry, you'll be making over $70,000 a year, plus living in, in a nice island, right? <laughs> uh, right, the next best would be California, which is also not bad, it's over $61,000. And Indiana, it's over $51,000, uh, the medium wages for that. But um, also on the average, someone that works in trade will earn between $23 to $32 per hour. So if you're a plumber, an electrician, that's the, um, the hourly average. So it's, it's not bad to be making that kind of money, uh, plus benefits and, and um, a, good, a good career. Because these, um, on the average, these jobs are growing uh, significantly in the United States. Um, so you'll have job security. <clears throat> so um, also, uh, you're going to be meeting one of the transfer advisors. Uh, her name is Joy. And if you go one, into one of the other uh, rooms, you'll, uh, you'll be able to hear more about transferring to a university. Currently, the associate's degree in building and construction um, allows you to transfer to the um, industrial leadership 9030 program um, at NAU. And what's great about this program is that you can learn a bachelor's degree totally online. You take 10 credits at NAU um, through the online program. You will transfer 90 credits from Pima, and you can talk to me about that if you're interested, and then I can help you plan out all the classes you're going to need to take in order to transfer. But it's a great opportunity to be able to transfer from Pima, take 10 credits, 10 classes at NAU, and be able to attain a bachelor's degree all online. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, I can answer those at right now I don't have any right now but I'll let you know okay <laughs> thank you thank you my name is Nick I'm going to um, be talking about machine tool and welding programs at Pima I'm just going to share my screen here um, can you see that I sure can good all right so um Two programs I'm going to talk about machine tool and welding. Um, so first of all, machine tool. So some people refer to machine tool as the king of trades, especially our instructors in the machine tool program like to call it that, um, because everything starts with manufacturing. So just about everything you handle on a given day was made um, with the, the kind of instruments that you'd be learning on in the machine tool program. Um, and the great thing about the machine tool program is it incorporates both theory and hands-on techniques in training. So you're actually given manufacturing projects to complete and you're learning on the same types of machines that are used in a, in a machine tool shop that you'd be using in a career. Um, like a lot of the degrees you've heard about, there are certificates and an associate's degree and these are what we call stackable. So the first certificate for machining is the inspection and quality assurance certificate. Um, it requires those five classes. There is a math class for that. So you do need uh, the math assessment in order to be able to take it. And then if you wanted to take the CNC operator certificate, it includes all five of those classes um, plus three um, additional CNC operator computer numeric control. That's the type of machine that you're learning on um, classes. 
And then the associate's degree kind of builds out on that. There's some general education added. So you, you take a writing class. So that's where the writing assessment would come in if you wanted to do the associates in machine tool versus just one of the certificates. You also need an arts and humanities class, a social behavioral sciences class, and that's do 100 class that you've heard a little bit about during this presentation. And then it adds some additional um, sort of core courses to sort of expand that knowledge um, of machine tool um, with kind of teaching you manual machines, um, some CAM or computer aided machining classes. This is the associate's degrees where you get that training as well as an applied metallurgy class. Within this program, you'll notice here, for example, MAC 275 says prerequisite GTM 105. Um, and you'll notice that especially with those with those CAM classes, they, they're each kind of prerequisites for the next. So there is some sequencing that's important to keep in mind. And that's why you want to be meeting with your advisor. So we can kind of make sure you're on track, not just for the upcoming semester, but to be able to take what you want the semester after that as well. And then the other program that I advise for is welding. Um, just about every process of, just about every manufacturing industry uses welding at some point in the process of making things, whether that's to actually produce it or to repair the item or to repair the machine that makes the item. Um, and there's always new technologies coming out in welding. So for example, um, we've, we're sort of introducing and reintegrating a robotics welding um, course into the, into the program. Again, the welding program uses both hands-on and some lecture learning. A lot of times when you're looking at the schedule of welding classes, you'll see this block and it'll say 9 to 9.50 and then 10 to 11.50. Well, basically that 9 to 9.50 is kind of your lecture time. And that 10 to 10.50 is where you're welding and the instructors are, are going around and, and helping you. Um, so you're getting that hands-on learning. And the program is designed for experienced welders or new welders. We get both in the program. We get people that are working uh, in the field and have been for a decade or more and kind of want to get that credential. And then we get folks that are brand new and have you know, never, never picked up an instrument to weld with. Um, so it's, it's great for both. Um, there are, again, stackable credentials in welding. So there's the basic welding certificate, which is five classes. Again, that math class. So you do need the math assessment, that college success and career planning class. And then your basic arc welding class, which also includes a lot of safety. Um, your blueprint reading class, and then your kind of next level arc welding class. Then we have the fabrication welding certificate, requires all five that I just talked about and adds three more, your gas metal, your gas tungsten, and then your layout and fabrication class. And you'll see again, this program, there's some kind of important sequencing. So I've listed prerequisites. So for example, to take welding 263, the last class in that fabrication certificate, you need to already have done welding 110, 115, and GTM 105. So that's why it's kind of important to be working with your advisor to make sure you're, um, you're staying up on all of that. And then the Associate of Applied Science in welding adds the same basic general education classes as the Associates of Applied Science in Machine Tool did, the writing class, the arts and humanities, the social behavioral science class. And so when we say arts and humanities and social behavioral science class, that's a category of classes. And there's a bunch of different ones that you could choose from. Um, so you could take, you know, uh, art, you could take like basic drawing, um, or if you wanted to take a humanities class, there's like classes on, on popular music. So you can learn about jazz and all that kind of stuff. Social and behavioral, if you really like history, you can take a history class, or um, if you have a particular type of history, you know, we've got Native American history classes that you can go into to fill that requirement. There's also a communications class for the associate's degree. It's business and professional communication. And then the associates in welding kind of really does expand on that knowledge of how to weld. It adds that metallurgy class, um, which is also a machine tool class to kind of give you more background on the properties of the metals that you're joining together. Um, it does add a pipe welding class. It adds a computer aided drafting class, which is a great thing to sort of know how those you know in blueprint reading and the layout class you're, you're studying a lot of plans well this is kind of how those plans themselves come into be and then there's also technical electives you, you need at least nine credits usually it's about three classes um, and there's different categories you can choose from so you know if you really like um, a couple of the classes that, that Rosa mentioned in BCT you could take some of those as an elective for welding um, if you take CAD 101 and you fall in love with that subject you can take more CAD classes as your electives so it builds in a lot of um, a lot of good flexibility there. So those are the two programs that I advise for. 
Um, and then this is uh, Pima Connect is how you make an appointment with your advisor. So um, if you log into my Pima, you go to the academic tab, and then you're going to select Pima Connect, and you'll see my success network. And if you click on that success network, it's going to show you who your program advisor is. Um, it's going to show you who your success counselor is. If you uh, any if you're enrolled in classes, the the instructor teaching that class, and if there's a success coach attached to any of those classes, it'll show you that person. So you can select your advisor. Um, your advisor can help you, like I said, with and we've all said with a whole bunch of things with planning and and applying to graduate and, and all that sort of technical stuff. Also, if you decide to switch your your program at any point. Uh, even your current advisor can help you like with the form to switch your program of study. And then once that form goes through, then your success network changes a little bit and it gets updated to reflect the advisor for whichever program you've gone into. The reason I mention that is because Pima Connect will really only let you make an appointment with your current program advisor. So you can at least, even if you're thinking of changing programs, you could reach out to them and say, hey, who's the advisor for this? And they can help put you in contact with that other person as well. Any questions about machine tool or welding programs? No. Good job. That was a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right on. Great. Great, Colleen. You have their information. Uh, let me share quickly again. Um, if you didn't get a picture of this, um, I could get their information here. Yeah, let me picture. So <laughs> reach out to either all of these program advisors. So let me move you, I can move you to our next breakout room. So I'm gonna stop recording. Quickly, like this.